Right. Um, <clears throat> the prize in this week's show mm. is the Carrion Empires, the new two-player starter set for Age of Sigmar. Um, ben, <laughs> there's not a lot to say about this other than it is the new two-player starter set for, for Age yeah. of Sigmar. Well, there are some additional things as well to this, uh, as well as this being the new two, sort of two-player battle box for you to pick up, which has the new Skaven in it, and well, using some of their old models, and of course the new Flesh Eater Court. There's also two new characters in there that are entirely unique to the set, so if you want to pick those up, you've got those in that box for you as well. It also comes with the rules and a booklet for playing through a little bit of a campaign using these miniatures too, which is something that's always nice to see when it comes to getting into a game for the first time. As well as the actual uh, announcement of the box, there's also uh, a couple of new battle tomes out, so there's one for the Flesh Eater Court, and there's one for the Skaven, so a lot of people who are Skaven players were really looking forward to a new book that's now out. Um, each of the armies also now has their own unique uh, terrain pieces, so you've got the Gnaw holes for the, Ska uh, the Skaven and I believe it's called the Gore Throne or, or some kind of a, I, can't, I can't remember what the name of the throne is but there's a massive like vampire throne for the, uh, the Flesh Eater Court as well which is very very fitting. They also have new endless spells and there's all the accessories that you might have imagined coming out as part of the release of a new battle tome and a new army stuff as well so hopefully we'll see some interesting things happening with uh, both the, the, the Order of Death and, and uh, the um, the, the, sorry, the Grand Alliance of Death and the Grand Alliance of Chaos with these. Maybe some new scale of models in the future would be pretty nice to see as well. Uh, but yeah, very, very cool indeed. And obviously that's the competition prize for this show as well. So yeah. I quite like the look of the skill and dice. I quite like the look of that terrain. I that, quite, that Skull of Thrones, <coughs> or Throne of Skulls thing is... I, I quite like how they've gone, Bretonian players, we haven't forgot about you. We knew we killed your army. And... Uh, and we've just scattered it over all these bits of terrain. <laughs> <laughs> so, good, good luck playing this game again. Sprinkle shields all over it. Uh, there's one thing that comes in these sets that I always love, which is, you see the, the war scrolls? Yes. Having your war scrolls as just cards that you can hold instead of having yeah. to print off and write up army lists makes me happy. But sure, do they not come in the box whenever you buy uh, a model. unit or whatever? Yeah. Well, you get them in the instructions. Uh -huh. But it's it's yeah, literally the part of the instructions. the instructions. All right. So okay. if you're if you're wanting to do it that way, you're literally carrying around books and books of instructions or, or cutting them cutting. out. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've I've actually uh, I got a game. Um, well, I've had a few games of Age of Sigmar mm. recently with my and I got a game with my mate Marty. Ah, nice. So Marty is one of the one of the people behind the scenes that paints armies for us from mm -hmm. time to time. So if you've ever seen our Eldar in mm -hmm. action or on the table, uh, that was uh, that was one of Marty's. He also painted up. I think our Blood Angels, and he did uh, my huge. Did he? No, the Blood Angels horse. was an in house, house one. Was it? Yeah, it was one of the very first ones that I did with you guys. Well, I. Oh, he did our Imperial Fist. That's the one. That's the ones. Yes, he did our Imperial Fist, and he did my huge Minotaur's army. Mm. But anyway, we don't care about any of that. I got a, a game of Age of Sigmar in with him, and I really, really enjoyed it. Which of I, the factions is tempting you? <sighs> There's two factions that tempt me. Right. Um, uh, these days, I have to pick factions on how quickly they can be painted and how yeah. easily they can be painted. By John. By John. Yeah. Because I don't have the time, and believe it or not, John is now a busy guy too. Because you know, the, the rest of the organization and the community keep John very busy, <laughs> so I don't get much time to annoy him. Okay? Yeah. Terrible, really. So, I was thinking too. My my absolute love is the Night Haunts, because mm -hmm. I, I think the Night Haunts are just absolutely cool, and I love Ghosties. I do, I've loved ghosties ever since I was a little tiny whippersnapper. Yeah. I think ghosties are the coolest thing ever. If I couldn't go with ghosties, mm. I would go with the tree men. I know that they're called Slytherin or Sylvaneth or something like that there. Yeah. To me, they will always be tree men. You mm. see, I know he has a love of ghosts because he bought a glow-in-the-dark skull mm. and would hide it in my bed at night. Yes. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Brotherly love. Totally. Uh, and then, uh, didn't you guys used to like share a bunk bed and yeah. didn't Warren sleep beneath you? So and did you maybe up. not just hear, Whoo! So like you'd be lying there and the skull would appear from the side. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when we were very, very young. This skull travelled all around with us as we moved house to house to house. But there was a, uh, one particular time we had uh, two beds on the ground mm -hmm. and there was a, a gap between the two beds. <laughs> and then... We'd be we'd be lying quietly, getting ready to go to sleep. Next, all you hear is thump, roll, 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 <laughs> <laughs> and the glow in the dark skull skull was now under his bed. And then I would I would start going. 
<laughs> and my poor Lloydy started to cry. And I, f- I feel actually, I feel, I feel almost guilty now. You know, like, <laughs> but I love, almost. I love no. ghosties. You see, it no, doesn't no. help that we'd probably watch Darby O'Gill and the Little People. <laughs> oh, well, oh yeah. it's, you it's see. full of ghosts. Yeah, that show. Love Darby O'Gill and the Little People. It's oh, fantastic. come on. And that is, I will say, that's where my love of the night haunts right. actually comes from, is, is from those old mm. fashioned views on what ghosts and, yeah. oh. and, and, the, un, and the, the, the undead and stuff are like. I, I think it's fabulous. Well, I'll be honest, I'd be tempted by the Stormcast, so if you ever want to split Soul Wars... Yeah, we could do that. We could do that. If The the reason I'm enjoying the Age of Sigmar is because it's so damn straightforward to play. Mm. There's there's no thinking. Everything you need is on the card. Yep. And, no thinking. Yeah, it's just no thinking. <laughs> just auto, auto, autopilot wargaming. It'd be like a poster, you know, with one of the taglines. You, know, you think that has no thinking Empire. until well, you have a battle board and you roll your dice and it tells you what you should do. <laughs> <laughs> but it, uh, when I say it has no thinking, let me, let me let me quantify <coughs> that, right? I can think about winning the war. Mm-hmm. I'm not having to think about how to play the game. Yeah, makes sense. Okay. It's, it's, it's a game that gets out of its own way. Card, yeah, so it, it takes away the the whole the, the whole aspect of trying to work out how to play the game, and I can just kind of throw myself into winning the war you know mm. winning the battle um whereas believe it or not after all these years i still can't memorize the the tables that are required to do the to do the hit the to hits and to wounds in 40k oh it's very uh, simple it's super simple well, it was very simple it I might be know. super simple I, but I, i'm a dork and i can't i just can't get it into my head I, I don't know what it is now but you used to just have to work off seven so your ballistic skill away from seven told you what you needed on a dice so here, yeah, yeah, that was it. It's just seven minus. Yeah. Too, too much math. Too much math. Oh no, math hammer. I like is the just, best hammer. I like just reading. Yeah, it, so. The current win thing. It's simple. If your strength and toughness is even, it's fours. If mine's greater than yours, it's three. If it's double, it's twos. Same on the reverse. Yeah, I've just went to sleep even just listening to that. Well, how's that any easier than roll this? Yeah. Why doesn't the card just say to damage me? Roll a figure higher than that. Yeah. On Age of Sigmar, it does. So mm-hmm. there, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a bonus. You know, it's um, and the models are better in Age of Sigmar than 40k. Ha, oh, ha. there you go. Uh, there's war. There you go. That's two Liam Neesons I've done in one episode. Drop <laughs> <laughs> Don't drop that. <laughs> um, let me ask you a question though, right? Mm-hmm. As starter sets go, mm-hmm. okay, it's kind of like your your two player battle boxes go. What do you think about the fact that it is basically vampires and rats? Mm-hmm. I'm fine. Would, with would they have been your would they have been your choice? Are they natural enemies though? Vampires. I, I would have are thought they, are they not part of the same Grand Alliance, Ben? No, because the Skaven are part of chaos and the Flesh Eater Court are part of death. So, right. Yeah, so they, they are different factions. So this yeah. isn't a box so, that you can buy and just merge everything. I, I believe only... I believe that I believe that the idea is that the Skaven have found their way into like the Warrens of the, the cities that the Flesh Eater Courts call home. So there's kind of like a sort of like a clash between the two there. Mm. Um, but it it's also interesting that they're looking more down like the sort of what would have been known back in the day as the Skyer or Scryer um, sort of section of the Skaven with their big huge machinery bits and pieces yeah. and not down the sort of like massed like tide of fur that you'd normally associate with Skaven. Yeah, or all the Instead, they've switched it round and had the Fleshy to Court as the numerous one. The right, and then had the Skaven as the big bulky ones. So Yeah. Who do you think are carrying the massive armor with twin guns? Oh yeah, sorry. Yo, it's um my bad. But yeah, it's interesting that they decided to go for what is substantially two evil armies, mm, regardless yeah. of where they fit in. Yeah, because it, it doesn't it doesn't have the the good versus evil kind of vibe. No, no. No, to be fair, they've done that before, but you have to go back to Warhammer well, no, they did it Fifth? recently as well with the the demons double pack. Yep, that's true. Yeah. In the in the forty k, I the think it's pack. corn demons versus slanesh demons. Mm-hmm. Was that uh, a starter set with the rules and all that? Uh, yes. No, think... no, did it? No, 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 no. no. no was... Where's that's a starter yeah. set with the rules? Yeah, I think I'll the last time that. they did that was lizard men and bretonians. Right. For a warhammer starter set, which would be two good armies. Mm. Yeah, but very you know 
different per se, but you know, mm -hmm. it, most of the time they normally stick to good versus evil. Yeah, it's, 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 it's just it's an interesting choice. Yeah. I'll be I'll be interested to see from a uh, from a recruitment perspective, you know, just what the what the uplift on on, mm -hmm. on that is. Is it going to be existing players looking at it and going? Oh, it's a cheap I've way of getting. I'm going to buy into that. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I would hardly have ranked, and I love the Skaven models. I, I, I especially mm. the the more kind of technologically mm. kind of the giant gerbil wheel, esoteric. Skaven. Yeah, uh, Skaven <laughs> doom wheels and stuff. Yeah, you know, because when somebody when somebody mentions like, um, you know, they're, they're doing terrain now specific to each faction, and I think of Skaven terrain. I just think of like a dirty drain pipe yeah. or something like that. You know, it's, I don't think it, the terrain would be that difficult to manufacture, if I'm being honest. But I, I like that. Mm. You know, I like the models. But I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have pegged Skaven as being, you know, the most popular entry point um, into something like Age of Sigmar. It just oh. seems like a, just surely, seems like a, an interesting choice. Surely they have to be looking at seals and picking it from that a wee bit. Maybe, maybe not. Or, I, I think it would have been fascinating to see them do something with two of the slightly more like fringe factions that they have. And so you would have had the Silverneth versus, uh, for example, the Kradron Overlord. So you've got the, these guys that are very heavily into their technology and then those that are more to do with nature and the sort of basic sort of powers of the earth and stuff in the mortal realms. That could be a, quite a fascinating uh, set. Yeah, or the Fishmen. Oh, or the, the Fishmen. Yeah, the deep, deep, deep in, yeah. yeah. So. Like the Fishmen are an amazing faction. Yeah. Oh, I'm not a fan. Do these um, fishmen? Oh, they're, 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 no, those fishmen. Are, they, they all look like they they're swimming. And you're going. So this is a swimming army against a non-swimming army, not in water. What's no, no. going on here? No, no, Jerry. I'm I'm, I'm going to set you straight on this. Oh, you they can bring try. the ocean with them. Um, air is water. Right. <laughs> okay. Justin, let me explain this. Right. So there's a bit of background to this. Okay. Uh, so well, is it is it de <laughs> decom or uh, well, you know, constructed water or something? You, you know that I have absolute abject terror of flying. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, are you scared of swimming? Um. No. No, I'm not scared of swimming. Okay. Because he just bobs around. Yes. <laughs> I've. <laughs> I'm effectively. I'm effectively a like a human manatee man. You know, I, I have no issues there. So it's like birds land on him. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to see you go. Mine, mine, mine. So as part of my long running recovery process to try and uh, see if I could get over this fear of flying. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I took flying lessons. Okay. Okay. Um, in a simulator. Oh, <laughs> not that and stupid. I, I, I didn't think you'd be fitting in a Cessna. Yeah. It's, and as part of that, um, you, you, you get to learn about the, the, the dynamics of flight and how flight actually works. Yeah. Okay. And the faster you go, mm -hmm. okay, the air effectively acts just like water. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, um, if these guys are fluid moving, dynamics. Uh, yeah, fluid dynamics. So, if these guys, these Elden F Deepkin, are are moving fast enough and doing their thing, oh, they could they could have water like movements, but through the air. Doesn't explain why or the they fish just are just flopping about. Magic water <laughs> flopping about the just, 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 just brought magic right, water with they them. They do. They do bring their magical etheric sea with them, and do that's they? why they really? float. They so magical ocean. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Forget everything I've said. It's just magic. It's just magic. At the end of the day. Have you seen that new robotic thing though that uh, that travels out on like? Yes, it's like wibbly a, wibbly. A, It's like a flatworm. Yeah, oh, traveling yeah. in water on land. Yeah. Uh, across Snow. any surface exactly the same way. So if yeah. it could go fast enough, it could probably fly then. Yes. Because it just yeah. wibbles well, through the, the water. Well, the thing is, if it, anything goes fast enough and it's the right shape, yeah. it will fly. Mm. That's 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 fluid dynamics. Then that's what the are you afraid of flying for? Like, if you fall out of a plane, you will effectively fly. Because you'll be like... Yeah, but it's not the, no, the no, flying no, that you're no. scared of, it's if the bit where you stop. Yeah, if you fall out of a plane, you will fall. Yeah. <laughs> Which will fly for a little while. Uh, again, it's Buzz not the fall here. that kills you, it's stopping at the end. Yes, it, it's it's the harsh stop. It's um, I, I hate everything about it. I hate the I hate the height of it, I hate the noise of it, I hate the, fire, the movement. You know, it's uh, the entire it's thing. It's funny, is like, though. Oh. It's funny a man who doesn't like the idea of being in an aluminium tube 
up in the air would yeah. be so fond of being in an aluminium tube in a vacuum. In a vacuum? Yes, with your Hyperloop stuff. You seem, you seem oh, well yeah, taken yeah, with the yeah, Hyperloop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, I'm well taken with the technology. I wouldn't say go on. <laughs> 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 It actually looks quite cool. This is like my aunt, as a, just a complete digression because it's so rare we do them. Um, she had a daughter in Australia, terrified of flying, would not set foot on a plane. Australia is a terrible place to be oh, well, yeah. if you're afraid well, yeah. of flying. Well, yeah. and this is it. So my aunt Chrissy decided she would finally go and, and visit my cousin in Australia. It was going to be a six week, you know, sort of holiday. And she got on board the uh, the plane. And they took off and they had a little bit of turbulence out of Dublin. Yeah. I know, a little old Catholic Irish lady. Out came the bottle of holy water from Lourdes <laughs> and she was <laughs> blessing the plane. So can you imagine being on this plane and like you hit a bit of turbulence and all of a sudden you're feeling drips on the back of your head and not knowing where they're coming from. You're giving it plenty to everybody. <laughs> God bless her. Well, there you go. There you go. It, it's, you're not alone. We will, we will, I remember, I'll know what to take. You see, I, 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 it was balls of whiskey that I was using to try and uh, get across. I remember so. seeing you on a plane the last time you were on one, and you were literally just clenching the hands, yeah. loud heavy metal, just to try and distract yourself. Are you really going to go there after the scream you let out? Oh, yeah, I, I screamed like a girl on that one. He did. He did. It was very. What cute. was it? No, it was, ah! more, it was more like a Bigfoot. <laughs> Dude, right. that was a rough landing. <laughs> last, uh, last, uh, last story. So.